So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use photos as references and how to use them to make cute illustrations like this in Procreate. You can follow this process with any brushes, but I'll link the exact ones I use in the description. Now, painting from references is a pretty common technique, and I think it's something we take for granted, so I want to explain my perspective on it and a couple of ways I think it can improve your artwork. Now the first thing is, uh, photos like this come with lots of interesting details uh, and colors and stuff that I wouldn't really naturally imagine. So I feel like when I'm not bogged down by all these tiny creative decisions like what style of cabinet, you know, what's in the cabinet, what's around the cabinet, instead I can focus on the kind of overall vibe of the illustration and maybe some interesting interactions that are going on there. And really quickly, I want to show you an artwork from another artist that uses references and I think it might give you a kind of another example. So this is an artwork that I really enjoy by Taryn Knight. It's always puzzled me because it's full of like tiny details and I've always wondered like, how did you decide these colors? Why are the socks like that? Why does the dress have three layers? And I just couldn't figure out how she would be able to imagine all of that just from nowhere. And then eventually I stumbled upon the original reference image. And I think what you can see here is she's kind of taken the color palette and a lot of the small details from the actual photo and instead she focused her creative energy on stylization, overall scene planning, the balance of the scene, and I especially think she spent a lot of time there on the sticks in the back. Now the last way that reference photos can really improve your artwork is that you can proof different scenes by creating collages. So what I mean is, uh, this is of course two different photographs that I've just combined together and I can just erase all the stuff on top of the cabinet, put in the cat, and kind of try out this scene. And then kind of in my imagination, I thought it might be interesting if the cat was looking at something on the wall. And it's also very inspiring to have a kind of a small glimpse of what the final result might look like. And with all that said, we can move on to our practical example. So I've already got two reference photos picked out, and the kind of a collaging here is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to paint over pretty much all the stuff on top of the console cabinet. Then I'll cut out the silhouette of my cat and then loosely place him up there. And since pretty much all my details and colors are sorted out from the reference photo, I can try to think more creatively and see if I can come up with anything cool for the scene. And I think I'll keep it simple and just have the cat sort of looking a little bit suspiciously at a painting on the wall of another cat. And once this reference collage is finished, I'm going to move it off to the side and then make a very rough sketch of everything on a separate layer. And when it comes to sketching, I think I use a pretty straightforward technique. I just stick with a basic simple shapes and do everything pretty loosely at first. We can refine it later on so I'm just focusing on getting everything down. And periodically I'll run into an issue with perspective. This happens a lot when you're using reference photos because obviously they're photos so they have perfect perspective. As a kind of general rule, if the perspective isn't critical for the illustration to make sense, I'll just throw the perspective away and just flatten it out. And for this illustration in particular, I do that with the rug on the floor. It doesn't matter if it's foreshortened or flat, I think it still looks like a rug, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. And I'm doing all this sketching on one layer, so periodically I might uh, kind of isolate something using the freehand selection tool and then warp it to slightly adjust it. And there we go, our kind of first initial rough sketch is finished. This is definitely way too rough to use as a painting reference. So I'm gonna make another sketch by just making a blank layer above this and then carefully tracing it out to make a perfect outline. And when you make a perfect outline like this, it's really important to make sure every little detail is in there. Some of the repetitive textures like the rattan, we can skip that and just remember to do that in the painting. And another trick I often use is I want really smooth lines for this outline. So I'm going to set my streamline in Procreate pretty high. And finally, here's the finished, super clean outline. Now to use this for actually painting, I recommend setting the transparency mode of it to multiply, lowering it to a point where it's just barely visible, and then making sure you paint down here below it, and also below the paper texture as well. And the workflow I use for painting is pretty much the same one I use in all my videos. So for example, the cabinet, the first thing I'm going to do is block out all the main colors, basically just filling everything out using the abstract round and then cutting it back with the eraser to match the sketch. Once that's done, I'm going to handle all the textures and shadows. And sometimes if the shadows aren't really enough to give this depth and contrast, 
I'll sparingly add some outlines. And with the colors and textures and shadows finished, I'll finish it up by adding all the details. And I'm going to do these uh, kind of on a separate layer just temporarily using the fine liner pen. I don't want these details to stand out too much because I want the focal point to be the cat. So I'm going to try to make them a little bit more subtle. And then once I'm happy with how everything for the cabinet looks, I'm going to merge all the layers I used to paint it onto one. And I'll move on and start painting another element in the scene using this exact same workflow. Now if this illustration kind of section here is going too fast to follow, don't worry because this whole video here is just meant as an overview about painting from references. If you want to learn kind of a slowed down step by step uh, process for illustration like this, check out any of the other videos on my channel after this one is finished. And to keep this video kind of simple, I'm just going to place in the same cat that we painted in last week's video. So if you're curious about learning how to paint cats, I highly recommend checking that video out because it will explain everything in detail. And now once all the major elements of the scene are painted, I'm going to open the layers panel and turn off the sketch. I don't need it anymore. And you can see down here, each element is just by itself on its own layer. So what I'm going to try to do next is kind of rearrange the whole scene change some of the layer order, adjust the positions of different elements, and just try to make the scene seem more balanced. It's definitely optional to kind of change things this way because we're sort of going away from the original sketch, but sometimes you do find new arrangements that work out really nicely. And here's my kind of final arrangement. I'm really happy with how this one turned out. And I wanted to use this as an example to show a problem that happens with transparency but it just so happened not to really occur with this illustration, but you might see it happen to you. And it did happen very slightly down here. Basically the rug here is behind the pot, but you can see it, it's kind of transparent. The pot is transparent and you can see the edge of the rug through it. And that's really easy to fix when that happens. So to fix that, I'm gonna make the potted plant more opaque. So I'm gonna duplicate it. So I've got two copies of my potted plant. I'm gonna select the bottom one and I'm gonna raise the brightness all the way to max. And basically what's happened is we've created a copy of our tree that's pure white. And it's basically functioning to sort of blot out the edge of the rug. So you can see it's just increased the opacity. And just to keep things organized, I always recommend merging the white version with the colored version, just to kind of keep the layers from getting too confusing. And just like that, this illustration is finished. Now, I hope this video was uh, easier to watch than it was to make. I felt like editing and filming this really pushed all my skills to the limit. I think this video moved really quickly because I was just focusing on the overall process of painting from photos. But if you want to see slowed down tutorials that really explain the illustration process, uh, I have hundreds of those on my channel and I recommend watching these ones next.